You told me I'm going to change my soul. No, I and did not say you that. Said that. You're, that's b Muhammad. Are you going to choose a bikini over me? Yes. If I were her, I would. Muhammad and Eve get into a huge fight after she resists his attempts to mold her into a Muslim woman, including telling her to change her clothes. He didn't approve of my outfit. And while this is so obvious, I'm just gonna say it. These two are not compatible. They're just not. Muhammad is a 25-year-old Muslim guy who wants free-spirited Eve to act like his mom. My perfect woman in my imagination is the women will love me as my mother. But then he wants to tell this 48-year-old woman what she can and cannot do. <laughs> I'm so confused. Why are they doing this? We're gonna talk about it. Plus, are you nervous? Huh? No, no, no. Uh, he's lying. <laughs> I'm not sure if it was the nerves or what, but during Bingham's first time meeting Ari's siblings, he tells them he wants Ari to help him get a green card, regardless if they work out or not. Because it's good for me. And their lack of response says it all. This disapproving silence is so horribly strong. Yeah, this wasn't Bingham's finest moment. Let's get into it. Hey 90 Day Fans fam, it's Melicia. Before we get into this week's episode, I have to talk about your takes on Bilal and Shida last week. I looked at the comments and I was like, damn. Almost every comment was going in on Bilal. You say he's a narcissist, controlling, emotionally abusive, the list goes on. And I'm gonna be honest, it made me take a step back and ask myself, am I missing something here? Because although I don't think Bilal is showing up as his best in this relationship, I don't see him as this horrible person. But so many of you do. And whenever you feel so strongly about something, I always step back and reassess. Because remember, this is a safe space where people with different opinions can have an honest conversation. That's what I love about y'all. I was planning on taking a look at some of your comments and letting you know what I think. But Shida has spoken out, and I'm sure you'd rather hear from her in this situation than me. In a now deleted Instagram story, Shida seemingly responds to all the criticism Bilal has been receiving, writing, quote, for as long as I've known Bilal, he has been a very sweet, caring, sensitive, kind-hearted soul who gives me whatever I want and I'll do the same for him. No, he is not a narcissist. No, he is not controlling because he is Muslim. But because perception is reality, we've been conditioned to perceive a black man as scared, illiterate, deadbeat, dependent, and struggling. If that's not what we see, then yes, he has to be a narcissist. So let's destroy him and humble him and remind him of what he has to be. Stop trying to defame him with perceptions. Sit back and enjoy the show. I think some of the comments were so harsh and some of them were very distasteful. So I've seen he had a very difficult time. When I spoke with Shida and Bilal, I asked him how he feels about all the criticism he's receiving. Here's what he had to say. Yeah, I've gotten phone calls, I've gotten like Wait, emails, what? I've gotten uh, DM, like the, the stuff that people say is like, wow, I've never experienced that before in my life. And it was just like, it was just eye opening to see that, wow, like somebody can take like 10, 20 minutes of what they see mm -hmm. and All just rip and form her opinion about you like that. So that, that was kind of hurtful. Before we move on, but I do want to mention one comment from Eve. She says, quote, I see no joy in their interaction. He is acting like a disciplinary, not good for coupledom. And you might be onto something because even though they went on a date this week, next week, Shida confronts Bilal about treating her like a child. It is compulsory for us men and women to learn our religion. What, every time we have a discussion, you give me a lecture. Do you feel like it's a lecture? All the time. When Bilal goes into lecture mode, I feel to respond and say, yes, daddy, no, daddy, okay, daddy. You do 24 seven. You all, I think it's time for us to talk to Shida. Just a one-on-one -on -one conversation. What do you think? Yeah, I think so. Let's make it happen. All right, let's dive into Eve and Muhammad's big fight. Just a refresher, last week he told her she can't be around other men alone. 
I'm not a Muslim woman. But you was a Muslim man. Fast forward to this week, Eve is taking Muhammad to dinner so he can meet her friends for the first time. But before they leave the house, he tells her what she's wearing is inappropriate. Oh, are you sure you're going with this coat? What's the matter? They can see your underwear. I can see everything. Okay, well, I can put another jacket on. All right, All thank right. you. The cameraman was wrong for that. Now, I don't subscribe to a man telling a woman what she should wear, but in a case like this, I can see why he asked her to put on a longer jacket because you can totally see her underwear clear as day. I know some people are okay with that, but personally, I think if she was going out with her friends, it could slide, but because she's going out with her man, beyond any religious rules, it's just a sign of respect. But on the flip side, I totally get why it hurts her feelings. She steps out feeling confident and he crushes that. But I was kind of annoyed that he didn't approve of my outfit. I didn't think it was distasteful. When they get to dinner with Eve's girlfriends, things take an uncomfortable turn for Muhammad to say the least. My first impression about Eve's friends, that they are weird. I felt that they are trying to see how I will react because I'm Muslim. So they in purpose to show more of their poops and I don't need to see that. That's a bit of a self-centered statement right there, Muhammad. So we have some questions for you. Is it okay if we take it easy? Eve's friends who seem ride or die, by the way, start grilling Muhammad. They ask if he's ever been in a relationship before and he reveals he was actually engaged. She broke up with me because I don't have money. Well, damn. For some reason, I get the feeling that Muhammad is okay with not having money. Maybe because he said he wants his woman to take care of him. I don't know. Have you ever been intimate with any other women? Like had sex with any other women? As the conversation continues, Eve's friends start to bring up sex and porn and that rubs Muhammad the wrong way. How did you know what to do then if you've never... <laughs> no, really, like, did you... Have you ever watched porn? In Egypt, no one never will ask this kind of question. Eve's friends then bring up Muhammad having an issue with Eve wearing a bikini. But remember, when he first slid into her DMs, her profile pic was a picture of her wearing a bikini, and her friends pointed that out. Muhammad didn't say much in response, but Eve makes it a moment to bring up the whole change your clothes situation. I was gonna wear a shorter jacket, and then he was like, your butt is gonna show. And every single one of her friends went into straight protection mode. When men try to tell women what to wear, it's, it's never in a, in a positive way, like how you're saying, if you're trying to protect her, it's more of controlling. I'm concerned that he's this controlling tyrant, and I would hate for her just to compromise to a union that I think should accept you fully as you are. Are you very curious why you're judging me? They haven't their poops hanging out and they don't want anyone judge, judge them, but they were judging me the entire time. And that's just showing how stupid they are. He really just called her friends stupid. <laughs> wow. How do y'all feel about Eve telling her friends about what happened between her and Muhammad before they left the house? I'm thinking she was still feeling bad about it and she wanted to get it out with hopes that they would make her feel better and reassure her that she dresses nice. But I was always taught not to be quick to tell your friends what's going on between you and your partner because once she forgives Muhammad and lets it go, those fierce warriors at the table will not, which also isn't necessarily a bad thing, but it can cause her more stress. I respect your culture and the difference between here and Egypt, but they didn't do the same. On the way home, Muhammad was obviously upset about the lines Eve's friends crossed during dinner by bringing up porn and asking him about sex. But then he tells Eve, oh, I'm actually mad at you for telling our business. When I told you my opinion about your clothes, that was private moment. 
between me and you. Eve then brings up how her friend already knows about a big fight they had months ago when she wore a bikini on a family vacation instead of a one piece. You told me I'm going to change my soul. No, I did not say you that. that. You're, that's bull Muhammad. You change what you agreed about in this point, and you take advantage of my. That's BS. Like, it, I'm wearing a bathing suit. I don't have time to go run around with my son in a pandemic to go find a one piece bathing suit. I'm sick of being judged myself, too. Like, I can't even put on a dress that I think is nice without you being like giving me a hard time. Okay, she should stop bringing up that dress because, in my opinion, it's taking away from her overall point. Sure. You said you're not going to wear a bikini anymore. Who cares about you're... a bikini? That's why I got upset. After you said that, you, you think... did it. Eve goes on to reveal all the things she changed about herself from Muhammad. She stopped eating pork, told him she would only drink on special occasions, and she cleaned out her closet, letting go of things she knows he would disapprove of. So she's made adjustments, but why is she the only one bending for her partner? Someone who is not bringing home the bag, mind you, just telling her what she can and cannot do. Now, I get that she signed up to marry a Muslim man, but what doesn't make sense to me is that Muhammad is giving her all these rules, but he's picking and choosing what rules he wants to follow. Remember, Muhammad is living with Eve, one rule broken, he's having sex with Eve, another rule broken. I know none of us are perfect, but how come she can't pick and choose what rules she wants to follow if that's what you're doing? That's just not fair. You can dress whatever you want, drink wine or whatever, but don't get married. Are you going to choose a bikini over me? Yes. At this point, that bathing suit symbolizes so much more. Eve seems like a woman who at 48 loves who she is and is embracing who she is which isn't always an easy place to get to. Plus, losing the parts that you like about yourself for somebody else, it's never worth it. I am not a Muslim woman, and I don't want to be told what to do. I don't think that I go out looking slutty or anything like that. I'm proud of the way I look, and I don't think that I should feel judged or ashamed for that. And I don't like to feel that from the person that supposedly loves me. Eve grabs a pillow and blanket and heads for the couch, leaving Muhammad to sleep alone in the bed for the night. In the perfect world, Muhammad would have been the one on the couch, but I guess Eve is being kind to her guest. I'm not gonna live my life feeling controlled and feeling like I'm a bad person for just being who I am. As much as I love him, I won't get married if we can't, like, figure this out. I would love to know what she loves about him and their relationship. I haven't seen a spark yet. All right, let's move on to Binyam and Ari. Ari! Yeah? Can you please come on? I don't want to be late. Ari is taking Binyam to dinner with her family, and he is anxious. Because while he's met Ari's parents, he hasn't met Ari's siblings. But... They are well aware of the pain he has caused their sister, and they waste no time bringing it up. Last time she was here and you guys were fighting and I heard you guys fighting through the wall, what was going on? Uh, 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 I did a mistake. I want to busy myself. Like, I go friend this, even if it's not my friend. Hey, can I meet you? I want to busy myself. Benyam is sticking with this story. I go like in the club, like just I want to forget past like something. He starts to tear up as he talks about the fear of losing his family again. I love her so much. I tell her, I tell her I, re I really sorry because of I'm doing this. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, oh my God. So Ari and mom yeah, take yeah. Benny at his word. So you were afraid she wasn't coming back. Yeah, I was yeah. So. But her sister? She calls the BS. That sounds like a nice answer to tell your future mother-in-law. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but is it true? Yeah, it's just true. It's just what's true. Because every time I ever called you on the phone, he wasn't there. Yes, this is sister love right here. She's not letting anything slide. Or if uh, you called me, like he was never there. 
Yeah, we're like, where's Binyam? Oh, he's out. Okay. Mm, she spoke the truth, and it looks like it hit home for Ari. That moment makes me think of every time I ignored the facts in a romantic relationship. Believe these stories, made excuses, just because I wanted it to work. Instead of looking at the person's actions and accepting them. Benyam likes to go out. Let the stories go and just be honest, Benny. Mm. <laughs> we gotta give a shout out to Ari's sister for pointing out the hard things to her. As we've seen on 90 Day in the Past, everybody doesn't have that. I want to try like MMA fighting. Benyam starts to tell Ari's family about his big dreams. And Ari's mom finds the nicest way to say, okay, but how are you going to make this money? Let's talk practical. So, Benjamin, I have a question. Who's paying the bills? Ari's parents are so cute. This is more expensive to live here than in Addis. So I'm like thinking, he can't work, you can't, you're not working. It's hard. I wonder if Ari wants to work. I don't know if she's saying it's hard to find a job or if it's hard because she likes her freedom. It's hard. We have our concerns about their sustainability together. Yeah, she needs to get a job too. First, because he's not working. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. There's also the fact that this show is basically both of their jobs at this point, but maybe that's too much to get into on TV. Anyway, Benyam decides this is a good time to tell Ari's family about another one of his dreams. And he excludes Ari from it. But don't worry, her sister calls him out. Okay, okay, I'll stop. I'm a dreamer, she you knows that. Uh, like, even if I'm not uh, with her, I want to be like in the UFC fighter, like in maybe championships. So that's why I'm dreaming. No! Maximize in the debut! So your major dream is to be a UFC fighter. Yeah. Whether you're with Ari or not, right? Is <laughs> yes. that what you said? Okay. <laughs> it, is that why you're here? <laughs> uh, Everybody's laughing, but nothing is funny. Ari's mom, Janice, goes on to ask Binyam if he's nervous. No, no, no. Uh, he's lying. <laughs> and then he says something that sounds even worse than what he said before. I came for Ari, but for my family. They tell me, even Ari, if she don't want you, uh, she can sign for you for a uh, green card because it's good for me. Why did he say that? This disapproving silence is so horribly strong. Ari says she thinks Benny is having a hard time communicating. But I think her family heard him clearly. She admits to thinking she loves Binyam more than he loves her. And she wonders if they will ever work out their trust and communication issues. I'm the real prize here, better than a green card. If I decide I want to marry you. Yeah, me too. I'm... Yeah, that didn't go too well. And next week, Binyam is about to find himself in more trouble. It's about to go down. So you didn't think to tell me that you would be training with a girl? Hey. Why is he training with a girl? This is my friend. What's your name? Hey. Molas. So you have full makeup on usually when you get out of my way. I told you to have a No, no you never told me that. If you're not going to be honest about what you're doing, and then this is bull****. Ari didn't care if that woman was a UFC fighter. She said, get out of my way. Get out of my way. And looking at this shot with Binyam and the woman, I'm not going to lie, I would have felt some way too. What is this, foreplay? It was a bit much. <laughs> all right, 90 Day Fans fam, make sure you stick with ET because we are covering it all. I will see you next time.